This is an illustration of the Volro crust algorithm for Voronoi meshing, highlighting the core theoretical concepts and further technical challenges. We study the problem of generating a Voronoi mesh that naturally conforms to a given closed surface. A subset of the cells in the generated mesh decomposes the volume enclosed by the surface, while the facets on the boundary of the union of those cells yield a surface approximation. Although tetrahedral meshing is widely used for finite element methods, polyhedral meshing can be more efficient for finite volume methods. Among polyhedral meshes, Voronoi meshes are particularly desirable as they are orthogonal to their dual Delaunay triangulations. We assume the input is a set of sample points on the surface. In order to describe the sampling conditions, we recall a few definitions. A maximal tangent ball is called a medial ball. By tracing the center points of all medial balls, we obtain the medial axis of the surface. It has the same homotopy type as the surface. At any point on the surface, the local feature size is defined as the distance from that point to the medial axis. When the surface is smooth, the local feature size is strictly positive everywhere. At any surface point, the ball of radius epsilon times the local feature size is called an epsilon ball. A set of surface points is called an epsilon sample if it hits every epsilon ball. Starting with an epsilon sample as input, we place at each sample an epsilon ball scaled by a factor of delta. For appropriate values of epsilon and delta, the union of such balls yields a good approximation of the surface. In particular, the inside and outside boundaries of the union of balls are isotopic to the surface. Our next step is to place a set of Voronoi seeds at the corner points of the union of balls, where each seed is labeled as either inside or outside the enclosed volume. The Voronoi facets common to one interior and one exterior seeds constitute the medial axis of the union of balls. As the medial axis of the union of balls is homeomorphic to the surface, and it separates the boundaries of the union of balls, it is immediately isotopic to the surface. With the surface protected, the interior can be meshed easily, allowing both structured and random volume meshes. Voila! Here's how it works in 3D. The Voronoi seeds placed at the corners of the union of balls correspond to a subset of the facets in the weighted Delaunay triangulation of the input samples. We exploit this duality relation to reconstruct the surface as a set of Voronoi facets. By regulating the density of interior samples, the volume can be decomposed into cells of the right size. To ensure that each input sample appears as a Voronoi vertex in the output mesh, we require a sparsity condition on the input epsilon sample. As a result, triangles formed by nearby input samples have no small angles. This provides a lower bound on the in radius of all Voronoi cells. To bound the out radius, we use an extension of the local feature size to guide the placement of interior seeds away from the surface. By combining the bounds on the in radius and out radius, we establish that all cells in the Voronoi decomposition are fat. Realistic inputs, however, can be considerably more complicated. In particular, Sharp features do not fit well with the epsilon sampling paradigm and require extra care to bound the quality of mesh elements in their neighborhoods. Even without sharp features, input models do not come ready with a sizing function and sampling the surface can be tricky. In addition, for applications that require surface approximations with good normals, extra steps are needed to iron out any irregularities that the presented approach might yield. This happens when a union of balls exhibits a certain type of configurations, resulting in extra Voronoi vertices in the output mesh. We address these issues in a forthcoming publication. For information regarding the Vorocrust software, please reach out to the point of contact at Sandia National Labs. Thanks for watching.